A new report from the Public Interest Research Group says tests of several wines and beers revealed traces of the chemical glyphosate. Now, the group tested a total of 15 beers and five wines. It found traces of the controversial weed killer in 19 of those 20 beverages. However, the levels of the chemical were all below the EPA risk uh, level for drinks. So, Kara Cook. Kara Cook Schultz is the director of the campaign to ban Roundup for the U.S. Public Interest Research Group, and she joins me now from Houston. So, we got to talk about this. So, this is the chemical that's found in the weed killer Roundup, and I think when people say, when you people hear that it's showing up in wines and beers, they're going to get really nervous. Tell us about your testing and the conclusion. What you found out? Yes, uh, we did test 20 different. Uh, varieties of wine and beer. And like you said, we found the weed killer glyphosate, which is the main active ingredient in Roundup in 19 of the 20 samples. And uh, I would agree that the levels that we found are pretty low. Um, but the reason that this is an important thing to note for your viewers is there have been a lot of other studies done by other people recently finding glyphosate in almost everything that we're testing. So that's where the concern is coming in. And I thought it was really interesting that a number of the beverages that you tested were listed as organic. And the use of these sort of chemicals, it's strictly forbidden if you want to label your drink organic. Yes, and I'm not accusing any organic uh, maker of wine or beer of using glyphosate. The levels we found, I suspect they're not using glyphosate. The, re the way that it's getting in, according to toxicologists that I've spoken with, is either one, it's coming in through irrigation water, so the farmer up the river is using glyphosate, it's getting into the water, and then the winemaker or the beer or the brewmaster is using that water. Um, the second way is it can actually be in the soil. So uh, an organic farm might be organic for quite a while, but before it was organic, it might actually have been a place where they were using uh, glyphosate or Roundup. So, you know, it might be really, really difficult to av avoid this chemical because it's used so widely. But the report acknowledges that the chemical levels are well below the EPA risk levels for beverages. Should we take some solace in that? Should consumers be changing their behavior because of these numbers? Maybe a little bit of the chemical is terrible no matter what. So uh, I would say that this is not as much a call for alarm as it is a call for action. Mm. Uh, if we are finding this level of glyphosate in wine and beer, even where we know the makers aren't using glyphosate, that to me indicates that there is glyphosate in a lot of other products. And we know that it's in Cheerios, we know that it's in uh, ice cream, we know that it, uh, this stuff is in a lot of the foods and, and the drinks that we're actually buying. So this level, the levels we found um, are not in themselves alarming. What I'm concerned about is what are we actually consuming every single day and what are the effects of that level of glyphosate? Wow, so we know that some have associated this chemical with cancer. There have been lawsuits filed. There's a new lawsuit that I think is going to court today filed in California, a 70 year old man who got cancer. He blames it on exposure to this um, chemical. But currently, what do we know about the link between this chemical and cancer? So in 2015, the World Health Organization's cancer arm, uh, their, their agency, looked at a bunch of different studies and concluded that glyphosate is a probable carcinogen. And the state of California also looked at that evidence and looked at what the World Health Organization said. And now the state of California also considers uh, glyphosate to be a probable carcinogen. So a lot of scientists are looking at this and saying, hey, this chemical, this most commonly used agrochemical in the country, what a lot of us have in our garages uh, and we use every day, uh, sadly, it's a probable carcinogen. All right, well, certainly good news to know. Kara Cook-Schultz, I think you're gonna be disappointing a lot of people though as they head off to happy hour later on today, but we really appreciate the research uh, that your organization does. Thank you. Thank you.